to sing some songs uh, with you all. Uh, thank you uh, to the Columbus KTC for the invitation. When I received the invitation, um, I hesitated a little bit because um, I, a lot of times, you know, I don't know what to teach. <laughs> and so I don't have much to say. But um, for the past uh, three months or so, uh, I was teaching uh, in Chinese language uh, to, to uh, Chinese students uh, on the Chami uh, Rumche's Mountain Dharma. And in the beginning of volume book number one, uh, as, as those of you who have read the book, you know, it talks about uh, the four thoughts that turn the mind. And I decided to pick some songs by Minerva uh, and sing them in class to remind uh, ourselves of impermanence, of preciousness of human life, and you know, of you know the, the karma and its cause and effect, and so on. So, uh, so I thought, well, maybe I will sing more songs, you know. Uh, so that's why I decided to um, uh, to uh, share some of the songs uh, by Minerva with you all. And really, um, these songs of uh, renunciation, um, I think I need, I need them more than anybody else because, you know, being lazy, uh, I really, uh, really need to have middle ribbons uh, whip, you know, to whip me uh, into more diligence and to really think more of the futility of samsara the meaninglessness of things that, a lot of the things that we do. Uh, so uh, rather than hoping that they will uh, benefit you in one way or another, I really hope that uh, this class will uh, bring me up to speed on diligence. So um, I think all of you have um, heard or read, you know, stories and biography uh, of Milarepa and probably have all been touched uh, by uh, his story and uh, the, his diligence is um, unequal. Uh, and so I think uh, to be able to uh, review some of uh, the experiences that he went through and some of the songs that he sang as a result of those experiences, I think uh, is quite meaningful. And I hope that um, these three classes will, will bring you um, some joy knowing that uh, you've made further connection with uh, Middle River, uh, especially since Middle River made the aspiration that anyone who hears his story reads about it and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, does a practice because of uh, his encouragement. Uh, can be reborn in the pure land that he, he uh, took rebirth to, which is our, our reality, the pure land of actual reality, and uh, will be brought to the uh, state of liberation. So I hope that um, we can be, um, we can come under the protection and blessing of Minerva through uh, reading about his stories and singing his uh, songs listening and tomorrow. So let's begin. Um, I compiled this. Um, uh, you've got you've got the songs or not? Not yet? Or I hope I hope you have. If not, it will show we'll show the, the text um, on the screen so you can all read about um, the songs. So if uh, yeah if you, the screen can show yeah. So this is the first page. And it shows the painting of Mirareba by the first, the, the tenth Karmapa, Chirin Doja. And his, um, his painting is extremely unique. Just like his, the 17th Karma uh, in his teaching uh, last week, or was it this, this week? He mentioned that the 10th Karmapa's paintings are so unique that the moment you see one, you know it's by, by whom, you know, it's by him. 
So this is um, his depiction of Minerva. And if we look at the next, next page, the table of contents, I have selected uh, from both his biography and the 100,000 songs of Minerva. Uh, you know, browse through all the songs, and then I picked up these songs that are relevant, relevant to the topic, uh, you know, renunciation. And I uh, put in the Tibetan, the English, and the phonetics uh, and compiled it into this little booklet. So uh, the first song is from his uh, biography. It's called the Song of Firm Resolution. This is the next page. And um, so what I thought I would do is um, I will just read the context in which the, the song uh, is a song uh, to give us you know, a better idea of why he sang the song. And uh, to have a, a better connection with Milarepa through uh, these little uh, stories. So as we know, uh, Milarepa, you know, studied with uh, Lord Marba for quite some time. And was, at some point he decided that he should visit his home uh, village and see his family. And with uh, Marba's blessing, he returned to his village. Um, and what he saw uh, was, you know, uh, quite tragic. He uh, saw that his mother had passed away and his sister had disappeared and be, uh, become a beggar. So I will just read through the text uh, and you can kind of follow in my reading. The news of the death of my mother, this is Milarepa uh, talking, you know. And the disappearance of my sister filled my heart with despair and sorrow. I hid myself in a nook until past sunset, where I wept bitterly. After sunset, I went to the village, and lo, I beheld my house exactly in the condition I had seen in my dream. So apparently he had dream of the dilapidated uh, uh, house. The fine house, which used to be like a temple, was the most dilapidated and ruinous condition. The set of sacred volumes had been damaged by the rain leaking in, and thick layers of dust and earth fallen from the ruined roof covered them. They were serving as nests for birds and mice. Wherever I looked, the dissolution and ruin met me so, so that I was overwhelmed with despondency. Groping my way towards the outer rooms, I found a heap of earth and rags over which a large quantity of weeds and grass had grown. On shaking it up, I found it to be a heap of human bones, which instinctively I knew to be my mother's. A deep and unutterable yearning seized me. So unbearable was the thought that I should never more see my mother that I was about to lose consciousness. So this is uh, extremely sad. And so Minerva continued, I made a pillow of my mother's bones and remained in an undistracted state of clear and deep meditation, whereby I realized that it was indeed possible to save both my parents from the pain and miseries of samsaric existence. After seven days and nights, I rose from the samadhi. So he went into deep samadhi uh, in which uh, he, um, was able to liberate the consciousness uh, of his mother. Upon reflection, I came to the conclusion that there was no permanent benefit to any state of samsara existence. So, I mean, you know, at this point, Minerva was already, you know, a yogi and yet uh, practiced extremely diligently for a long time. But the fact that he saw his own mother's bones, you know, and the condition of his old house really struck him deeply. Um, so he said, I made the decision to do, to go to the Jagadaso cave and spend my life in meditation. I was determined to sit there day and night until death. I repeated my vows to devote my life to a rigid 
uh, asceticism until realization of the ultimate truth and resolved to adhere to them firmly. In an almost frenzied mood, I sang the following song of firm resolution. You know, um, pardon me if I choke up when I sing these songs. Uh, so um, when I was singing, uh, I sang all these songs, you know, a few times before the class, both in English and Tibetan, and it just, you know, emotions. Um, I think it's from Miller Ripper's Blessings. So, um, but first let's look at the, the, the English translation and, you know, first study, study the sounds and then we'll sing them. So it begins, essence of Akshobhya, the compassionate Lord, Mamba, the translator, following his instructions. So essence of Akshobhya, uh, here it says Akshobhya, but, you know, it could be any other Buddha. Akshobhya is the, the, the Buddha of the Eastern uh, Buddha family, the Lord of that uh, family. And so he says, Marpa is essence of Akshobhya. In, in other words, the essence of all Buddhas, the compassionate Lord, Marpa the translator. So following his instru instructions, I came to my homeland, a prison of Maras. He sees uh, his homeland as a prison of Maras. This can be understood, I think, in two ways. One is that um, this is where uh, all the villagers, you know, uh, are still uh, being uh, are still engaged in a lot of negative deeds, um, and especially his uncle and aunt uh, engaged in a lot of negative things toward his family. But uh, I think uh, the other way to look at it is that, uh, in just in general. Uh, anyone's homeland is a prison Maras because, you know, this is where uh, all the attachment to the world, all the samsara attachment, attachment begin and reside and then continue to, um, to be. So here I've obtained a teacher of impermanence and illusion. So this experience of devastating sadness, you know, really hit him hard. So that experience, that sadness, and that revulsion uh, for samsara is an excellent teacher of impermanence. And uh, that, I mean, that visual, re revulsion for samsara is a result uh, of having seen uh, what's happened to his family. So th that experience is a teacher uh, of impermanence and illusion. It is an illusion, nonetheless, although it is impermanent. It is an illusion because the very nature of all things is that they don't have a, a real nature and therefore their existence is uh, not substantial and therefore it is an illusion. That really struck hard as well. So he says, I have been blessed to gain certainty and confidence in this excellent teacher. And uh, I think, uh, Seeing this, we can also, you know, take it as a lesson for ourselves, uh, because there are many things in life that may uh, strike us as uh, uh, sad, uh, unfortunate, uh, unpleasant, and uh, just downright uh, uh, negative. But uh, we can all, just like Milarepa, take them as a teacher uh, of the, uh, the uh, nature of samsara, which is suffering. So here, Milarepa says, and I've learned my lesson. This is a, a, an excellent teacher. Then he says, in general, all that appear in this are impermanent, unstable, and transient. And it is so because they don't have a substantial nature and therefore no substantial uh, existence. Especially, specifically, things of samsara are meaningless. They are meaningless because they, they, most of the things in samsara lead to more suffering. Rather than doing meaningless things, I will go and practice meaningful divine dharma. 
first for my father was alive. I, as his son, wasn't there for him. I mean, his father died when he was very young. So he was there, but he wasn't really there for him. When I was there, he had passed away. Even if we had been together, there would have been no meaning. So this son will practice the meaningful divine dharma and go to the Jaga Daso cave to meditate. So even if we had been there together, if we had been there uh, up to now, it would have been meaningless. What good is there? Um, uh, things that we do in this life, uh, for the most part, lead to more sufferings in future lives. So there's no meaning even if we have been together. The only thing meaningful is to practice the divine dharma. So he says, I'll go to the uh, Jagadasu cave to meditate. Jagar means, Jag means cave. Gar means white. Das, da means um, uh, horse. So means uh, tooth or teeth. So the, the white cave of horse tooth, whatever it means. Um, or a horse with a white cave. And he mentions this again and again. Next, he says, when my mother was alive, I, I, the son was away. Yeah, he was away for many years. When I returned home, she had passed away. Even if we had been together, there would have been no meaning. So this son will practice the meaningful divine dharma and go to the Jagadasu cave to meditate. Then about his sister. When my sister was at home, I was, I as her brother was away. When this brother returned home, I found her gone astray. She had left home, unbar unable to bury her mother and uh, become uh, a beggar herself. Even if we had been together, there would be no meaning. So I will practice the meaningful divine dharma and go to the Jagadasu cave to meditate. When there were sacred scriptures, there was no caretaker. In the house, there they used to have, you know, uh, the Buddhist texts. But for years, of course, no one to take care of them. When the caretaker arrived, they had been ruined by drops of water. Even if both had been present, there would be no meaning. So I will practice meaningful divine dharma and go to the Jagadasu cave to meditate. When the house was there, there was no owner. For many years, you know, it was left without an owner. When the owner arrived, the house was dilapidated. And if both had been there, there would have been no meaning. So I will practice meaningful divine dharma and go to the Jagadasu cave to meditate. When the field was fertile, the farmer was away. And they, they used to have a large farm. When the farmer came, the field was overgrown with weeds. Even if both had been there, there would be no meaning. So I will practice a meaningful divine dharma and go to the Jagadasu cave to meditate. Homeland, old home, home field, and so on are things of samsara and meaningless. Any timid being who likes them can take them. As for me, the yogi, I will go to practice that which liberates. Father, the greatly kind Marba, the translator, bless his beggar to stay in retreat. So uh, this is a very moving song. And uh, years ago, when his holiness, Grandma uh, was uh, presiding over the Kachumanam, he uh, directed, wrote the play uh, of Mirabeba and composed many melodies uh, for the songs of uh, songs that Mirabeba, the actor, Mirabeba sang. And uh, of all these melodies, uh, I think there are two uh, that, uh, two, three, there are three that we'll use in this class, but we'll use mainly just one of them uh, so that we can use the melody again and again to familiarize ourselves with that particular melody. Um, and that, so that in the future, if we sing, wish to sing them again, you know, the melody uh, uh, will be familiar. And also it's easier uh, to learn. Um, so we will use the first melody. Uh, 
he's only actually composed the melody for this, this very song, but he uh, made it shorter. So I think just so that we can hear uh, the recording of a song, let's look at the, the short version of this song, which is on page four of the booklet. So this is uh, the same song, but his own has uh, made it shorter uh, to be sung in the play, the Millerville play. And so uh, I will play this song and we'll sing it together in Tibetan. That way we'll hear the uh, the melody more clearly than if I were to sing it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> 
It's a beautiful, isn't it? Um, very touching uh, melody. So we will try to sing it ourselves. We'll go back to the long original version of the song. Uh, for some reason, this melody is very difficult for me to uh, try to sing it in English. So I think we'll, I, I won't attempt to sing it in English. We'll sing it in Tibetan and uh, sing it slowly so you have time to also look at the translation. I hope that's okay. So we'll go back to page one, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll sing it in Tibetan. And also I, I want to sing every song in English and Tibetan, both twice, you know, once in Tibetan and once in English. Because I was singing in English, it, um, the, because we understand the meaning, uh, there's a, a greater chance that we'll, we'll develop more deeper feeling uh, uh, for the song. But we also need to sing in Tibetan because that's the original words, you know, uh, sung by Mil Rebbe. So in order to receive blessings directly from him, I think it's it's good to sing it also in Tibetan. But since we've we, you know we've gone through the um, the meaning of the of the song in English, I think it's okay for this song. Uh, we just sing it in Tibetan. So here we go. Um, my voice doesn't come out that nice. So, you know, pardon me if it's not pleasant to, to your ears, but uh, please everybody sing along <clears throat> and sing loudly um, and try to embrace, you know, uh, Middle River's uh, teaching in this song. <clears throat> Jai <laughs> Oh, 
John Richards and God Ching So um for the short version, let's listen again to the ch chanting uh, that was sung uh, during the Miller River play. This was sung by the uh, main Romdek monastery, uh, and the, the chant leader. He has an excellent voice. He sang the songs of all the, the Miller River, the songs, you know, that we might uh, play. Uh, so let's um, listen to it again and sing along. The short version. Sorry, wrong, wrong song. Let's start over again.
<clears throat> I hope that we see samsara as uh, meaningless uh, as uh, Minerva sees it. At least that uh, in our day to day life, Minerva will constantly uh, serve as a means to, uh, especially in these songs, as a means to. Uh, remind us you know, not to be attached to worldly things, not to be attached to uh, worldly pursuits, and not to be uh, engaged with full force, you know, things that are uh, meaningless, such as fame and fortune, and, um, these kind of things. Um, even if we're not able to uh, meditate in a cave in this life, it's good to make the aspiration to be to do so in future lives. It is good to live a life as if we were in retreat, you know, uh, in terms of our mindset, in terms of how we look at things, you know, in terms of our value of things, you know, what is more valuable, dharma or worldly things. Um, I hope that in this kind of retreat kind of mindset, um, it will uh, bring us uh, lots of uh, fruitful results in this life. So uh, the next song is also from Minerva's biography. It's called The Song of Fulfillment of Wishes. Of course, as we can guess, these wishes are not any kind of ordinary wish. It's quite extreme, but um, this is why he, he, set, he set such an excellent example for all the yogis who meditate uh, in isolated place, places in, 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 you know, in the you know, next uh, many, many centuries later. So here's a song in English. It says, I supplic supplicate the Lord Guru. He always begins by supplicating uh, his guru, Lord Mamba, because he, his guru is the source of accomplishment, is the source of all blessings, is the source of everything, actually. So, uh, you know, he attributes all that is accomplished to his guru and his guru alone. Bless this beggar to stay in retreat. And this uh, is actually typical of many of his songs uh, to, be, to, to uh, request his guru, Marba, to bless him to be able to stay in retreat. My happiness unfelt by relatives and sorrow unfelt by enemies because he's all alone. But that's fine, he says, if I can die in this mountain retreat, this yogi's wish will be fulfilled. That's all, that's all I want. If I just can die, die uh, in this retreat, nobody knows who I am, where I've been, no such person exists. That is my wish. I'll just die here and practice all my life. My aging unknown to friends, my illness unknown to my sister. If I can die in this mountain retreat, this yogi's wish will be fulfilled. My death unknown to others, my rotten corpse unseen by birds. Because it's so isolated, I guess then even birds don't fly there. If I can die in this mountain retreat, this yogi's wish will be fulfilled. My putrid flesh is sucked by flies. This is his corpse. My nerves and sinews eaten by insects. If I can die in this mountain retreat, this yogi's wish will be fulfilled. With no human footprint by my door and no mark of blood inside the cave. I don't quite understand why he says no mark of blood, but anyway. If I can die in this mountain retreat, this yogi's wish will be fulfilled. With no one to crowd around my corpse and no one to cry over my death. And usually we think, well, this is horrible. You know, no one to cry over my death. You know, no one loves me or cares about me, uh, my death. Well, that's what everybody thinks, but not Milareva. If I can die in this mountain retreat, this yogi's wish will be fulfilled. 
with no one who asks where I have been and no place to be pointed as the destination. If I can die in this modern retreat, this yogi's wish will be fulfilled. In this solitary cave, this beggar makes the aspiration of death for the benefit of beings may be achieved. If it is achieved, my aspiration is fulfilled. So uh, this almost makes us sad, yeah? That he's so lonely that nobody's, nobody cares. Nobody uh, knows uh, what's happening to him. But actually, uh, in many of Miller Weber's songs, uh, he sings of how happy he is. And indeed, he's extremely happy beyond anybody can imagine. He's extremely happy just being there all by himself, practicing in the mountain retreat. And so if nobody knows that he's, he even exists, uh, he will be quite gratified, quite satisfied by just knowing that. And this is, um, I think, it's very hard for most of us to even imagine, you know, how can this be? But this is really the spirit and uh, the true uh, spirit uh, of a, a true yogi, you know, whose only concern is practice. You know, nothing else matters, nothing. And uh, I think even we're not, if, if we're not, even if we're not there, this is something that really uh, worth uh, aspiring to. Even if we can't physically be in a, in a retreat setting, I hope that you know uh, the song will inspire us to be mentally uh, in a retreat, just like I said a little earlier, mentally in a retreat, you know, that we don't care about anything whatsoever. Practice in the Dharma is all we care about. Everything else can fall apart, but my dharma and practice cannot fall apart. And uh, so with this, uh, let's uh, sing the short version uh, produced by the 17th Grandpa. This again was uh, used in the Middle River play in Bogaya 2009. So the short version is the next page, page seven. Um, we will listen to the recording of the song that was sung at the play.
Okay, let's try to sing together the long version, the original version. It's on page five. <clears throat> Page five, okay. No. The song of a feminine adventures. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll try to sing in English. How's that? I supplicate the Guru, the Lord Guru, bless this beggar to stay in retreat. My happiness unfelt by relatives and sorrow unfelt by enemies. If I can die in this mountain retreat, this yoga is which will be fulfilled. My aging unknown to friends and illness unknown to my sister. If I can die in this mountain retreat, this yoga is which will be fulfilled. My death unknown to others, my rotten corpse unseen by birds. If I can die in this mountain retreat, this yogi is which will, will be fulfilled. My putrid flesh of by flies, my nerves and sinews eaten by insects. If I can die in this mountain, retreat this yogi is which will be fulfilled. With no human footprint by my door, and no mark of blood inside the cave. If I can die in this mountain, retreat this yogi is which will be fulfilled. With no one to crowd around my corpse and no one to cry over my death. If I can die in this rude mountain retreat, this young is which will be fulfilled. With no one who asks his way I have been and no place to be pointed as destination. If I can die in this mountain retreat, this yogi is which will be fulfilled. In this revelatory cave, this beggar makes the aspiration of death. For the benefit of being may be achieved. If it is achieved, my aspiration is fulfilled. For the benefit of beings, may it be achieved. If it is achieved, my aspiration is fulfilled. Okay, we'll sing it in Tibetan one more time. The melody is um, repetitive, as you have noticed, I'm sure. Every four sentences, uh, you know, begins the same melody again. So let's go back to the beginning of the song and try to sing it in Tibetan. Okay, page five, top of page five, yep. Chela Mengula Sowa Dil Jangjechasimbajingyelo 
개바족이 마소신 나와 심을 마소와 일제대로 진우나 나줄 삼바소바이 시와 미이 마소신 조조자이 마도와 리자디로 진우나 나줄 삼바소바이 샤루 점에 집어다 사귀보이 사와루 리자디로 진우나 나줄 삼바소바이 고나 미제 내바다 나나 자지 내다루 미제 디루 진우나 나줄 삼바소바이 로다 고미 내바다 신앙오미네바 리자디로 진우나 난조의 삼바조바이 나가소지미네바 디송디송네바 리자디로 진우나 난줄 삼바조바이 미메롱외 자보도 장보지외 나나도 저외든도 대바쇼 태나 삼바 조바인 저외 텐도 대바쇼 태나 삼바 조바 Okay, so let's sing the song again, the short version, just so you're more familiar with the the meaning and the melody. Okay, one more time with uh, the recording. Sorry, <laughs> it jumped to the next song. Okay, let's try it again.
Okay, let's look at the third song. Uh, from this point on, uh, all the songs except for the last one, I think, last one or two, are from the 100,000 songs of Milreba. So this is from chapter three of uh, 100,000 songs. Uh, it's entitled The Song of the Snow. But, uh, uh, you know, in each chapter, there are many songs. So the song that I've chosen uh, may not have necessarily have anything to do with snow, just so you know. Okay. So here's the background of uh, the story. Of, of, uh, Here, um, what happened was that uh, Milareba had stayed um, in a, a place called uh, Dharma and Prior to this, he had stayed in a place uh, called Lapchi. Lapchi is a very famous uh, practice place, a very famous sacred mountain now because of Milarepa, you know, it, uh, well, he stayed there for, uh, for a long time to meditate. Uh, so, but uh, uh, then he just uh, decided uh, to go to Zama when the people of Zama invited him to stay. So, uh, so Shen Shendoma uh, offered him uh, services, and uh, I'm sorry, he decided to go to Lapchi. You know, after <clears throat> after staying in uh, Zama for uh, uh, some time, because uh, he saw that there are many mundane activities and people were attached to some success, um, some saric things. So he showed great revulsion. Uh, and uh, people at Zah, of course, were not happy that he was leaving. So they said to him, oh, you do nothing but benefit such beings. So please benefit us by staying here this winter and teaching us. After taming the demons, you can go as we please. They, next spring, we too will go and serve you. So they, they said, you know, they could go and serve him in, in Lapchi. What I have here in the booklet is a, is a kind of a shorter version of the story. So now I'm reading to you a longer version. Uh, and in, so these people try to dissuade him from going. And in particular, the teacher, Shakyaguna and Shendomo, tried to dissuade him saying such things as, oh, when winter comes, it will be very difficult and tiresome in the snow. But however much they pleaded, Minerva would not listen and said, I, a lineage son of Naroba, have no fear of the snow. 
uh, and no fear of how uh, much uh, snow there may be. Also, Marva's command to me was to give up distractions and mundane activities by staying in isolated places free of people. Especially for me, settling in a village would be, no, would be worse than death just like we've seen in the previous song. To him, that is no good, you know, it's worse than death. Uh, so he spoke with a resolve to leave. Then the people of Zarma quickly offered provisions to Nilarebla and several of them promised to come to request Dharma from him during the winter. Uh, six people lay and ordained, including the teacher Shakya Kuna and Shandomo brought Minerva a drink for his uh, departure. They said they would go with him as far as the pass. Once they crossed the pass, they went further on as far as a place called Demon Pond. Then uh, Jizun Minerva taking with him two jays of Zamba. A uh, jay is, is uh, a measure uh, of, you know, I don't know, something like small ba a bag or something. Two, two jays of zamba, one jay of rice, a side of meat and a portion of butter, went to the great cave of taming demons where he stayed. And so all the people headed back and at the pass, clouds gathered and a blizzard struck. They had a difficult time keeping to the path as snow came roiling, roiling and swelling up to their knees. They finally made it to their village just before the people went to sleep. Then from that evening on, it snowed day and night for another 18 days. And for six months, travel between the place called Jin and Nyanang uh, came to a halt. Because of this, Meriba's students were certain, certain that Jizun had died. And so they offered a funeral rite to Puja for him. Because you know the snow had fallen so much on his way on his way to uh, Lapchi, where he wanted to meditate, that they were certain he must have been he must have died on the way there. When the next saga dawa, you know, this is the fourth Tibetan month, uh, which is about the fifth fifth to the sixth uh, Western month. So when the Sakadawa had passed, those disciples from before went to retrieve the deceased, bo deceased body of the, of, uh, the Jezun, Jezun Minerva, cutting a path in the snow with axes. When they got near the place where he had stayed, they sat down on, on some raised ground and rested. There a great snow leopard, there was a snow leopard, that climbed up the face of a boulder and stretched. It is said that he looked at them for a long while and then went away. Upon seeing this, they discussed among themselves, if the snow leopard ate the Jesuit's body, well, uh, there, will probably, uh, let's see, there will probably only be pieces of his clothing or hair and nothing else to be found. Heavy hearted, they went along weeping. The long and treacherous path there, uh, uh, where aspirations of tiger and leopards manifested and walked, became known as the treacherous path of leopards and tigers. So this is dangerous place. There the party had misgivings, thinking where these devils, uh, were these devils or ghosts. Um, so they were kind of scared. With Doubts in their minds, they approached the great cave of taming demons, you know, where um, Jizun said he was going to go to Manjde. And they could hear Jizun singing a song. Then they thought, well, oh, perhaps it's a hunter giving him some provisions. Uh, maybe a hunter gave him some provisions, or maybe he found some animal's corpse that, he would, that was killed by a beast. Is it possible he did not die after all? So when they reached him, the guru said, all you fools, you got up to this area some time ago. Why have you only just not arrived here? The food is getting cold. Come quickly into the cave. At this, they were so happy, they began to weep. 
They all came to Milavilipa tear, tearfully, clutching at his hands and feet. Then Jijun said, no, don't cry, come on and eat. First, they were all prostrated and asked about their guru's health. Looking around all the provisions, they saw that only one of the jay of the zampa from before had been finished. And on top of that, there was a cooked fish of meat and with rice. Cooked, not fish, sorry, cooked dish of meat and rice. The teacher, Shakya Guna, said, you cooked our food before we arrived. Did the Jesun see us coming through the higher uh, perceptions? Uh, you know, did you know out of your super cognition? The Jijun replied, looking out from the top of Boulder, I saw when you all were sitting and resting. So the teacher Shakya Guna said, on that Boulder, we only saw a snow leopard. We didn't see the Jijun. Where was the Jijun at that point? The snow leopard was me, Minerva said. I'm a yogi who, was, who has attained mastery over prana, which means winds and mind, winds and mind. Since I have overcome the constituents of the four elements, I can display miracles of transforming my body into anything I desire. Since you're all worthy disciples, I display this miracle in my material body. But you should not speak of this to other people. Well, now we know. So anyway, so on and so forth. Uh, in the end, um, uh, one of them called Chen Doma said, although meeting the precious Jesun is like meeting the Buddhas of the three times, these, these people who don't even serve you, follow you, or practice Dharma, let alone have the devotion towards you, are more stupid than animals. The Jesun replied, if someone doesn't have pure devotion to me, that is fine. But if someone does not practice Dharma when they have obtained a precious human life at a time when the Buddha's teachings have spread, that is extremely foolish. And he sang the song. So this song uh, is um, a great um, source for us to reflect upon the precious human life or with all the freedoms and resources. You know. So the psalm goes, I bow at the feet of Marva, the translator. Now listen, you faithful benefactors. Again, uh, he uh, pays homage to his teacher, Marva. When the genuine Dharma has extensively spread to prayerlessly engage in non virtue is extremely foolish. With this body and its freedoms and resources so hard to get, to squander this human life is extremely foolish. We have all learned uh, what the freedoms and resources are, you know, the eight freedoms and 10 resources. Uh, but just to refresh your memory in case it's unclear, the eight freedoms are, we are free from, having been born in the hell realm, in the predator realm, animal realm, lone lifeguards realm, uncivilized lands, incomplete faculties. We all have complete faculties. Uh, we're free of having front wrong views. And we're in an age where the Buddha has uh, appeared. You know? uh, so we're free of being, having born in a place where the Buddha has not appeared. So these are eight freedoms and the 10 resources. The first five, a Buddha has come, Chakyamuni has come. He has taught the Dharma and the Dharma teachings have continued until now. That's the third. The fourth is there are followers of the teachings uh, and there are favorable conditions for Dharma practice. These are the five uh, circumstances that are favorable. Yeah. And, and then the five that are personal circumstances, being uh, a human being, having been born in the central land, with faculties intact, 
having a, a lifestyle that's not harmful or wrong, and having faith in the three uh, jewels or the three teachings. So these are the sources and uh, circumstances that we uh, have obtained. Therefore, to not use it and waste time is extremely foolish. So here we're being, we're being scolded. You know? I mean, of course, he, Mila Reba wasn't scolding us per se, but really, I mean, uh, you know, if we squander our life away, we can think of him as scolding us. It's being foolish. So the next page, it continues to constantly dwell in the channel grounds of uh, decre uh, decrepit walled cities, extremely foolish. So here it is described uh, by Middle Ripa, um, the walled cities, you know, living in cities, busy with uh, lives in the city. It's like in a channel ground, he said. Uh, you know, corpses is lying around, uh, completely meaningless. Spouses are just like guests at a gathering. To bicker and fight with them is extremely foolish. Now we know, you know, spouses do bicker and fight, and that is common. But he says, that is foolish. It's just get, like guests at, at, a not, uh, at a gathering. You know, what is the point of... Um, arguing over anything. The self-resounding sound of those illusory words of, un, uh, sorry, of renown to get attached to these extremely foolish. Renown is only self-resounding illusory words. So we need to remember this. So likewise, if someone, uh, you know, speaks ill of us and broadcasts it even, then it's just an echo, you know, it's illusory words uh, to be attached to them, to, to care so much about them, to be hurt by them is extremely foolish, he says. Enemies that are fleeting, just like a flower. To risk your life fighting them is extremely foolish. In the house of deception of one's relatives, to spare when one of them dies is extremely foolish. Chore the borrowed wealth that is like a dewdrop, to be knotted up with miserliness is extremely foolish. All the wealth that we have, he says, is only borrowed because we can only use it in this lifetime, maybe even shorter than a lifetime. You know, it's here and gone later. So uh, while we have the wealth, use it in good things, you know, in the Dharma, in generosity. Right. As for this body, this bag of filth, to scrub it, desiring it to be good, extremely foolish. This supreme food, the ne this nectar of instruction to sell it for food and wealth is extremely foolish. This assembly with many foolish ones. Uh oh, so he's scolding all of them. Like, you've come here, but you are foolish ones. If you're clever through the sublime Dhamma, you'll become self sufficient. If you're smart, you'll do as this yogi does. So he's quite. Uh, a, you know, a stern teacher. Everything you do is finished, foolish, except when you do it like me. This is basically what he was saying. Very high bar, but we try. Okay, let's uh, try to sing it. Sorry, it's going to run over time a little bit. So back to page eight. We have this in English. Okay, let's sing in English first. Yeah, that's the right place. I bow at the feet of my brother, translator. Now listen, you faithful benefactors. When the genuine Dharma has 
us extensively spread to carelessly engage in non-virtue, extremely foolish with its body and its freedoms and resources so hard to get to squander this law, human life is extremely foolish to constantly dwell in channel grounds of deep regretted walls it is extremely foolish spouses are just like guests at a gathering to bigger and fight with them is extremely foolish the self-resounding of illusory words of renown to get attached to these is extremely foolish. Enemies that are feeding just like a flower to risk your life, fighting them is extremely foolish. In the house of deception of one's relatives, to despair when one of them dies is extremely foolish. Tour the bar of wealth that's like a due job to be nodded up with miserliness is extremely foolish. As for this body, this bag of filth, to, discru- to scrub it, desiring it to be good, extremely foolish. This supreme food, this nectar of instruction to sell it for food and wealth is extremely foolish. And this assembly with many foolish ones if you're clever through the sublime dharma, you will become sufficient. If you're smart, you will do as this yogi does. Okay, so I don't want to run over time too much. Uh, so we'll sing the Tibetan version tomorrow morning. Now let's uh, chant the dedication prayers. I hope it can be displayed. Yes, dedication prayers. I'm very sorry in the beginning, I forgot to chant the refuge in Bodhicitta and the four immeasurables. I'll try to remember tomorrow. Okay, the dedication prayers. Tomnenebejano <laughs> Dushele gyo gyo 
Karma baden den benin gorge. Chodar gun kyal kyal jin kyme jin. Tabara bebe Okay, so with this, we'll conclude to this evening's teaching, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Have a good evening. Okay, thank you, Lama. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, see you, see you tomorrow. Thank see you so much. much. Thank you. Um, Sleep well. Thank you, Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>